check this out. I'd like to get a random selection of these students and I'd like the top three. There we go. Or maybe the top five. Or the top two. I'm going to show you how I built that formula. We're going to talk about dynamic arrays, lambdas, let, and really it's a step-by-step -step guide to get you into these things, to get you thinking, and I'm hopefully going to explain it in a way that you go, okay, it's not that hard. All right, let's go. So the concept here is we can do this in stages and um, keep it simple, which is great and I'm a big fan of, but then we can also combine those stages into one formula using let as a helper, and then we can even name that formula by using a lambda. Okay, it sounds a bit involved, but honestly, when you see the process, it's, it's not too bad. So the first concept is I wanna sort this list randomly, and then the next concept is I wanna keep the first X number of items of that sorted list, okay? So to, to create a sort of a random sort order, I'm using the rand array function. So equals rand array, which just creates a, a list of random numbers. How many random numbers? Well, I'm gonna use the rows function to work out there's a different random number for each one. Press enter. Okay, so there we go. We've got a list of random numbers. Okay. Then I just want to sort that list so that the lowest random number is first, and then I'm going to grab the first X number of items from that sorted list. So equals sort. You can highlight the array. And I just want the second column, so a two. And that's the list sorted. And every time I sort of recalculate, you know, the list gets resorted. Yeah, sort of F9 to recalculate. Um, or just type in a number. So I just want the first three items. So equals take. Here's the array. How many rows? Three. Or you could put that, you know, in an input cell. So there's the first three. Or I could put a three in here and I could reference that cell instead. And there you go. And that's that might be all you need, right? Two, one. Why create one, you know, funky formula if this is just a one-off thing and that's all you need? Perfect, okay? Don't overcomplicate stuff. All right, but let's say you want that formula for multiple purposes or on lots of different spots. So it might be nice to sort of parameterize that into a single formula. So let's break this down using the let function. So the let function allows you to sort of add parameters or sort of useful, reusable parts of formulas within a longer formula. So let's give this a go. Equals let. All right, Alt Enter to start a new line. And I'm just gonna say selected list. That's the name of my um, list. And that is, I'll put a comma, and that is that. Okay, so I can use that word selected list instead of referring to B3 to B12 and the rest of my formulas, comma. All right, and then essentially I wanna join together that list with the random sort, the rand array. So I am gonna use a H stack, okay, horizontal stack. And I'm gonna to stack together the selected list with that rand array. Okay, rand array rows in the selected list. Okay, close the bracket on the rand array, on the h stack, sorry. Close, let me do shift and uh, alt enter a couple of times. Close on the let. Okay, always lift, miss out a bracket there. Okay, so there we go, that's it joined together. So my next thing I wanna do is sort this by the second column and then take the first three rows, all right? So we're gonna go back up here um, and this is, I'm gonna nudge that bracket down. If 
going to go sort, oops, sort that array, okay, by the second column. Close the bracket, actually, Alt Enter, close the bracket. I'll format this at the end. So it's sorted, and then I want to take the first few, okay. So just go here, nudge that down, take, okay. I want to come down here and say, uh, take the first three rows and one column. Okay, for the first column, so that's taking three rows from the first column. There we go, that's what take does. And then if I come up here, I could you know, put a number in there, and my formula could, rather than hard coding in the three, could refer to that. But I actually wanna sort of make it a little bit more blatant inside my let. So I'm gonna say, um, okay, number of items equals three, and then just replace that three down there with number of items. Oh, not an equals. I always do that with let. I always put an equals in there. So number of items is three, and then this is number of, there we go, number of items. So you parameterize stuff. So that's essentially the formula. And I would, you know, I would take the time to come up here and I would parameterize this, not parameterize, I would indent this stuff. Okay, so take can come across here. Sort goes even deeper. Hstack goes even deeper again. And then this is the sort by the second column. And then this is the bit of the take. So that can come out. And then this is the next part. And then that's the final bit. So just take the time to indent your formula. I wish shift enter worked like it does in Power BI. Uh, currently it doesn't, okay? But I think you can actually format this inside, what I'll show you in a minute, in the, inside the sort of advanced formula editor. So you get the idea? Okay, all inside one formula. So where does Lambda come into this? Well, I wanna make this reusable. Okay, I wanna use this and, si and simplify it for the end user. I just want a function called random selection. Okay, I want to turn all that messy stuff into a single named formula. So how do I do that? Well, I have on my home tab an Excel Labs button with the advanced formula editor in it. Okay, I've done a little tutorial on lambdas and stuff in the past. Um, it's basically an add-in. Uh, so if I go to, if I go in here and search for store and browse add-ins, Okay, you want to look for Excel Labs and install that to get this little icon on the side here. And under Names and Functions, I'm actually going to click on my formula here. And you can add it from the grid if you've already written it, or you can sort of click Add and start writing it. But check this out, this little button here, plus Add from Grid. Okay, and it's saying range containing the calculation is C3. Okay, I'm just going to go preview and it's brought it in okay which is great so the function name is not Gwen the function name will be uh, random selection and let's call it YT for YouTube okay just so you show I'm showing it here and really what you do with a lambda here is you can go all right this selected list becomes part of the lambda bear with me this number of items becomes part of the lambda. And then you don't really, in this scenario, need those let bits anymore, okay? Because they're gonna be captured up there. I'm just gonna get rid of that last bracket. And I think that's about it. Uh, I'll go create. And that should be See, it says selected list, number of items, random selection. Okay, so that's it selected. 
So in theory, if I go in any random cell equals random selection yt, ask for you list, there we go, comma, and how many items? Five, press enter, and there's the five items. Okay, so where is that stored? Well, it's stored in the name manager. So formulas and then name manager. So that formula, okay, let me make this a bit bigger. There it is, random selection yt. Okay, and there's the lambda. It's actually stored in the workbook. But I could copy this formula, control C, paste it in any other Excel file, and it would still work. Okay. You can even set it up, you know, save it in a template file or something like that. Um, and then one other way you can do this, okay, one other way is you can set up um, lambdas and then you can basically go to your workbook here and you can download them from a, from a, a GitHub gist. And I've mentioned this in the past about setting these up and stuff, but essentially I've, I've got um, a site here called win.bio.link and it's got a whole bunch of lists of things that's all I get up to. Um, and one of them is the Lambda gist that I've got set up. So if you click on that, it takes you to this sort of page here, okay, which lists all my lambdas, my little play ones I've played about with and made public. Um, the most recent one being this one, the random selection one. You can even just copy and paste this code from that gist if you want. I'll also put the code in the um, description of the video. Or you can actually import it. And again, I'll put the link to my gist, or just go to here, go into the gist. I'll put the link as well um, in the description. And then you can actually import that and it imports it into this workbook with all my other formulas. You can create your own gist, you know, it's, it's free. So options. One extra thing I added in my um, gist version here, okay, which I'll, I'll put in the description, is um, this square brackets, number of items to return. So there's the list, select a list, as we saw. And then in square brackets, which means optional, I've added number of items to return. So what that then means is that my items here, the number of items return, I've had to put in this function if is omitted. So if somebody doesn't put in the optional parameter, it'll just default to one, otherwise return however many items they sort of selected. So let me show you that in action, all right? So if I come down here and I go equals random selection, that's the one from the lambda. lambda. If I highlight these folks and I don't put in comma any number, I just close the bracket, press enter, it'll just default to the first, okay? And that's how you do an optional parameter. Right down the bottom here, let me just show you. Square brackets, number of items to return. All right, hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. Does that help? Um, are you sort of more familiar now with the concept of let and lambdas? If you find this useful, if you find the content useful and helpful, please, you know, leave a comment. Let other people know, like the video, share it around. Um, I really appreciate it. Okay, thanks a lot. I'll catch you in the next video.